that's bright. Welcome to episode four, Blue Light. Not every color in the spectrum is important. There's really only a couple that are essential for normal plant growth. You can grow plants under just red light. You can grow plants under just blue light. But if you want it to grow sort of to look like a normal plant, you generally want to have a mix of red and blue light. So how can a grower practically use blue light for their advantage or manipulate blue light levels? Well, there's a few lights that have a lot of blue light in their spectrum. Compact fluorescent lights, T5 fluorescent lights, they both deliver a good bit of blue light, which can get the same sort of effects where you get that compact growth and you get the pigmentation. There's also metal halide and ceramic metal halide lights, which will also deliver a good bit of blue. And then there's LEDs. White LEDs are actually blue LEDs with a phosphorus coating which makes them put out a light that looks white. It delivers a good bit of blue light. But then there's programmable LED fixtures like this one, which has three different color LEDs. You have blue, white, and red. And each one of those can be adjusted individually. So the, the ratio of them can all be adjusted. So I can do what I'm doing here where I'm giving these plants a lot of blue and some white. And on this side, I'm delivering just a lot of red with a little bit of blue, just so they'll have normal growth. I don't want it to just go all red or else they might get a little weird, but so we can have a, a good comparison of what it looks like to have a blue heavy versus a red heavy spectrum. And both of these sides are at the same light intensity, so the intensity is not a factor. It's purely a spectrum show off, spectrum, spectrum parade. Programmable fixtures like this are also great because a lot of growers are moving towards having specific light recipes for different stages of the crop or for specific crops. A lot of growers that are using grow lights for flowering crops like to use a blue spectrum for the early stages of growth it can help produce a really compact plant. And then they switch to a red dominant spectrum during flowering. There's some evidence that red light can jumpstart the flowering process. So you can shave off possibly a week by using red light. A lot of this is anecdotal. There's not a lot of solid research in this area yet, but it's definitely very popular to use the blue light during vegetative and shifting towards red during flowering. The blue light can produce smaller leaves and that's not always desirable. When someone buys basil, they want big leaves. When someone buys lettuce, they want big leaves. They also want pigmentation. If you're buying a red oak leaf lettuce, you want it to look red. If you're buying a purple basil, you want it to be purple. So a grower can use light at specific times for their advantage. They might start their crop under a light like that, where it's heavy and red. And that red will, will help lead to leaf expansion. You have nice, big, soft leaves. And then in the last week or two, they'll do this thing called EOP lighting or end of production lighting where in this case they would expose the crop to about a week or two of a blue dominant spectrum and that's used to color the crop it's used to increase the anthocyanin production so you get that that good red color or that good purple color in your crop which makes it more sellable besides powering photosynthesis Blue light has a lot of effects on plant growth. Plants use blue light as an indicator of the general intensity of light. So a plant will 
pretty much just pinpoint blue light to determine how intense is the light in general. And that is what dictates a lot of physiological responses that correlate to intense light. Those include plants, when they're exposed to the blue light, even in low intensity environments, are gonna stay compact because the blue light makes them think that they're in intense light. If a plant is in intense light, it doesn't have motivation to grow really tall. Instead of thinking, oh, it might be in the canopy of a forest and it needs to burst out of the canopy to reach the light, it thinks, nope, I'm already at the top of the canopy. I'm in full sun. I don't need to grow tall. I can focus my energy on collecting more light and I don't need to waste energy on growing out my stem. Additionally, blue light can lead to smaller leaves. And the same sort of idea, if it's in intense light, it doesn't need to grow really large leaves to collect a lot of light. It can keep its leaves smaller and collect all the light it needs. When plants are exposed to intense light or when they're exposed to blue light at low intensities, they increase their production of anthocyanins. That's the red pigment. These pigments act as a sunscreen for the crop. It protects them from intense light, even if they aren't in intense light, but it's just blue light because they're getting tricked. We're tricking them. That's what we're doing. We're tricking these plants. It's bad. No, it's not bad. I don't know if it's bad. Blue light stimulates the opening of stomata. Stomata are these pores that are on the leaves. It's pretty much the mouth that a plant breathes out of and breathes in at, breathes in out of, breathes into, breathes into. It's the mouth hole of the plant. If a plant is in intense light, it thinks, oh, I better open up my mouth holes so I can breathe out all the water vapor and oxygen that are the byproducts of photosynthesis and breathe in carbon dioxide so I can use that carbon dioxide in photosynthesis. If a plant is in intense light, it's gonna be doing a lot of photosynthesis, which means it's gonna be making a lot of oxygen, it's gonna be producing a lot of water vapor, and it's gonna need carbon dioxide. But blue light will do this to extreme. It's really gonna push open the stomata, which is super useful if you play your cards right and you know what you're doing. All of these responses are what you would see if a plant was being exposed to intense light, but all of these responses also happen in low light conditions, but with a high ratio of blue light, which is what I'm doing right here. Although this light might look a little bit white, it actually has a high ratio of blue. Hopefully we'll see in this trial in a few weeks, that this side that has heavy blue light is gonna show all those responses of being under intense light. Blue light also has a big role in phototropism. The process of leaves orienting themselves to receive light which might be the, the stem of a basil plant or a tomato plant growing towards the light of a blue light. It's the way leaves will orientate themselves towards the sun to collect the most amount of light. All of that is in response to blue light. When a plant has the choice of growing towards a blue light or a red light, it grows towards the blue because it's the favorite child. So it works. Now let's look at it under view mode, AKA white LEDs. Beep boop, boop, beep, 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 boop, boop, boop. I didn't actually push anything. I just wanted to make sounds. Okay, view mode, go. Boop, 
boop, boop, boop. So on this side, we have the blue light or the blue heavy spectrum. The plants are shorter, which is what we expected. And the leaves are redder, which is also what we expected. We're also seeing a difference in height on this side. The purple basil on this side is a little bit shorter than we have over here. Let me, let me ground some examples. This one was grown primarily with blue. This one was grown with a lot of red. Pretty significant height difference. That is pretty awesome. Wow, science is cool. So this one was grown with a blue heavy spectrum. This one was grown with a red heavy spectrum. The red led to an increase in height. Blue stayed a little bit more compact. Definitely advantages for either, you know, what you want is very grower specific of whether you want it to be short. Maybe you want a really short plant because you can't, because you have height limitations in your grow. Or maybe you want a taller plant because you're packaging it in a bag and you want it to look really good. Or maybe you're cutting it and I don't know, there's a lot of reasons you would want a tall plant. Better airflow through the leaves and the, you do you. <laughs> look at the roots. They're doing a lady in the tramp thing. This has been episode four of Plants and Light. In the next episode, I go undercover to learn about green light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Science, 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 science. science. rocked it. Yeah, science, yeah, yeah, science, yeah. I scienced it. I scienced it. I'm a big, big baby boy. This episode was made possible with support from Hydro Farm. In this episode, we saw the Solar System 550, the Solar System Controller, Sunburst CMH, PowerPAR Blue LED, PowerPAR Red LED, the PowerPAR Commercial 4-Foot LED Fixture, the Jumpstart 24-Watt 2-Foot LED Strip Reflector Fixture, the Jumpstart T548-Watt 4-Foot LED Strip Reflector Fixture, and all other types of goodies. So many goodies to make this video possible. Thank you, Hydro Farm.